Hey game makers, Pixelated Pope here, and welcome to part one of my hopefully comprehensive tutorial on dealing with black bars, resolution, and scaling in Game Maker. So if you're curious about why black bars and pixel scaling are an issue in the first place and want to understand why we need to fix them, then keep watching. There's two questions I see very often on the Game Maker forum, subreddit, and chat room. First, how do I get rid of the black bars when my game is in full screen? And the second, usually asked by people who have figured out their own answer to the first, now that the black bars are gone, why do my graphics look weird? There are slight variations that second question, typically related to distorted sprites or text when in full screen mode. And as some figure out, we need to answer those questions in order. In this first part, we are going to focus on the details of why these issues occur in the first place so you understand more generally how they need to be fixed. In a future part, we'll discuss how to correct these issues in GameMaker specifically. So let's tackle those full screen bars. So you just built the first room for your retro SNES style game and you start it up in full screen mode only to see something like this. Big, ugly black bars on the left and right side of your screen. You wanted your game to fill the full screen, right? Why is this happening? To understand why, we need to talk about something called aspect ratios. You've no doubt heard the term before, probably when buying a new TV or a monitor or discussing the new Tarantino film. An aspect ratio is a description of the relationship between something's width and height. For monitors, we usually describe the aspect ratios by saying x by y and writing it with a colon between the numbers. So you might see 16 by 9, 16 by 10, or 21 by 9. What this number colon number annotation is describing is the number of horizontal pixels for the number of vertical pixels across the whole display. So in a 16 by 9 display, there are 16 pixels horizontally for every 9 pixels vertically. This pattern is repeated across the entire monitor. Take 1920 by 1080 for example. This 16 by 9 pattern is repeated across the entire monitor 120 times. 16 times 120 equals 1920, and 9 times 120 equals 1080. So let's get back to your game. You decide to make your game in the same resolution as the original SNES, 256 by 224. The difference in shape should be immediately obvious, but let's do the math real fast to figure out the aspect ratio of the SNES. To do that, we're going to need to go back to school and remember how to simplify a fraction. In this case, the fraction 256 over 224, the width of the screen over the height. To simplify this, we are just going to divide the top and bottom values by 2 until we get an odd number, because I'm lazy. So we get 128 by 112, 64 by 56, 32 by 28, 16 by 14, and finally 8 by 7. So the SNES's aspect ratio is 8 by 7. An 8 by 7 game on a 16 by 9 monitor will always result in black bars. Black bars are the result of a game whose aspect ratio doesn't perfectly match the current monitor's aspect ratio. So what can we do about this? Sure, we could design our game specifically for 16x9 displays and just deal with the black bars on 16x10, uh, or heaven forbid, a 4x3. But I assume you're watching this video to avoid those cheap hacks. And as I mentioned before, we'll get into the GM specifics later, but generally speaking, you have two options. You can maintain the width of your game and restrict the height. You'll notice that we can still see the same amount of water on the right and, and the half of the tree on the left, just like the original image at the top. However, we can no longer see the stairs as we've had to crop the image. Alternatively, and this is usually preferable, we maintain the height and expand the width. This looks much better and in most cases is preferred. There are some instances, especially in competitive or first-person games, where giving an expanded field of view offers a small advantage to those with wider monitors. So pick the one that works best for your game, but 9 times out of 10, I recommend trying to make the second option work for your project. Regardless of which one you pick, you can say goodbye to the black bars. So you've decided to deviate from your original SNES resolution that you had before and select the aspect ratio you were going to design your game for primarily keeping in mind that small changes up or down in the aspect ratio won't be a problem. Now you need to select an actual resolution. You decide on 512 by 288, a perfectly 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So you start building your game, you're getting art in, and you run it in full screen, and bam, ugliness. Pixels aren't square anymore, everything looks distorted, and text is hard to even look at. Why does this happen? 
Let's look at an example. This is Terra from Final Fantasy VI. You can see the outlines around each pixel, and each pixel is just that, a single pixel. So let's scale her up by two times. You can see from the faint grid that each pixel is now actually four pixels. She looks perfect and is visually no different from 1x, just uses more pixels. If I hadn't scaled the image for the presentation, she would also be twice as tall and twice as wide, but otherwise visually identical. But what happens if we want to scale to a non-whole number, say 1.5 times? What would that look like? Yeah, what happened? Everything is a complete mess. Her outlines, her eyes, her clothes, everything looks horrible. But why? Because there is no such thing as half a pixel in computer graphics. When we say I want her to be twice as big, each pixel's width and height gets multiplied by two, resulting in each pixel consisting of four pixels. But when I say 1.5 times bigger or 2.7 or any non-whole number, the graphics engine just has to sort of guess where to each pixel goes. It rounds values, it fills in gaps to try and do what you asked it to do. Turn every one pixel into 2.25 pixels by increasing their width and height by 50%, which is impossible when there's no such thing as a fraction of a pixel. Ideally, when scaling pixel art, you should always work in whole numbers. But this is a problem in practical application. When you tell your game to go into full screen, you don't tell the game to scale it by two or three times. You give it the resolution that you want to scale it to, the current monitor's resolution, and it uses whatever multiple it needs to become exactly that size. And that multiplier is rarely going to be a whole number. So let's take a look at what our selected resolution, 512 by 288, might look like on a 1920 by 1080 monitor. Initially, the window of the game would be about that big, just a small fraction of the size of the screen. So we go full screen and the game stretches to 1080p. Uh-oh, look at the bottom right of that image. See how one of the blocks of 512 by 288 is going off the screen? That means that 512 does not divide evenly into 1920, nor does 288 divide evenly into 1080. So GameMaker will squish and scale your game to force it to fit to the full screen perfectly using non-whole numbers and causing the distortion we saw on Portera in the previous slide. So how do we fix this? Well, the only solution, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise, is that we have to change the resolution of our game to scale perfectly to the current monitor. Again, you might think you can just go change your resolution to one that scales perfectly to 1080p right out of the box, and that'll work for 1080p, but not for 1920 by 1200 or 1440p, Remember, we need to do everything dynamically because we have no idea what monitor this is going to be played on. So let's do some math. Since we're working with consistent aspect ratio, we only need to try manipulating either the width or the height, and the multiplier we come up with can apply to, to the other. So let's look at the width. 1920 divided by 512, the resolution of our game, is 3.75, meaning we can fit 3.75 copies of our game horizontally in a 1920 by 1080 monitor. So that explains the 75% of a box we see in the bottom right corner. So at this point, we have two options. We can increase the size of our game so that we fit three perfectly, or decrease the size so that we can fit four. 1920 divided by four is 480. So if we want to fit four boxes, we would need our game's horizontal resolution to be 480. 1920 divided by three is 640. So if we wanted our game to be bigger, so it only scales three times, we would need a width of 640. In most cases, I think you'll want to take the resolution that is the smallest deviation from your original desired size. So decreasing the size so we can fit four is a much shorter distance than increasing the size to get three and will result in the smallest possible change from our desired size. So if we use the width of 480, that means our height is going to be 270 because we are maintaining the 16 by nine aspect ratio. And when full screened on 1920 by 1080 monitor, we get a game that has been perfectly scaled to 4X. Each pixel is now represented by 16 pixel blocks on the monitor, there will be no distortion, everything will look exactly as it does at 1X in windowed mode, just bigger. Okay, so I've talked a lot about the general principles that govern aspect ratio and pixel scaling, but we haven't really talked about GameMaker specifically. 
What things do you need to change in your game to dynamically modify the resolution based on the current monitor? What are the different parts of a game maker game that control how the game is displayed? We'll cover these questions in part two. If you'd like to see more tutorials like this, try hitting those like or subscribe buttons. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below and I'll do what I can to answer them. Thanks for watching. Now go make something awesome.